Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and this is not lumber. What, Code? But you're in Lumber Tycoon 2. You're right, I am in Lumber Tycoon 2. This is going to be the first and maybe the only um, series that I do like this. The only, the only episode, maybe. Uh, it just depends on what the reaction of you is. So if it gets to like 2 billion likes, you know, I'll do another episode or something like that. <clears throat> no, it, it really is going to depend on if you guys like this concept, if you want to see more of this concept, stuff like that. Um, the main part, the main thing, hold on. How am I going to do that? That's okay. The, the main reason is because a lot of you ask questions about Lumber Tycoon 2, and the best thing I can do is to like recreate some of these things inside studio. So why don't we fade, 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 fade. Hold on, I can get rid of that. And I can get rid of that's fine. That's fine. Okay. <coughs> so, um, welcome to studio. <laughs> We're just going to flip flop in between the two. This way uh, I can go into my Code Primate Labs, uh, create the models that you guys want to see, and kind of explain a little bit about them. I'll do my best to try and replicate. Um, these are not copies, okay? I'm not copying stuff from the game. This is me doing my best to replicate how these things are made. So, for example, an end times axe. How is, how is an end times axe made? How, what does it have in it? What, like... How does these things work? If it turns out to be a really good um, series, then I'll keep going with it. Uh, for now, let's keep it really simple. Um, yeah, let's let's just do an axe. Um, let's do a simple axe. I don't want to get into like the whole end times thing. Um, but <coughs> um, let's see. Why not an alpha axe? Here we go. So, an alpha axe, right there, okay? This model is actually available in studio inside the free models. And I will show that to you here. Uh, let's go ahead and switch over real quick. If you come over to your, your little toolbar thing and you type in axe right here, the presidential vampire axe, um, there is an axe by, oh gosh, uh, Put this tool into the star pack. No, that's not what I wanted to do. What are you doing? Oh gosh! Oh gosh! It's all bloody. Eek. Delete that. <clears throat> Hold on. Didn't I have an, a Lincoln axe? Where is the Lincoln axe? Okay. Let's delete that. Um. Let's start over here. I'm just gonna grab this presidential axe, and that is not where I wanted it. So I'll put it right down here. Now, when you first see this, it's like, uh, that doesn't look right. It's like way too wide. It's got some stuff going on. That's because the mesh is different than the one that you're seeing inside, um, inside Roblox. It's, uh, it's stretched, kind of. So, uh, I guess this would be a Rookie Axe, wouldn't it? Except it doesn't have the teeth. It's a Rookie Axe without the teeth. Hmm. Okay, so let's go over to here. Um, what this consists of, it consists of a tool, it consists of a camera, so it shows up differently um, in the models and stuff like that. Uh, also, whenever you do your inventory, um, like it shows up in the backpack, it'll show a picture of the, the thing. It has a sword script, it has a local GUI script, and it has a handle. The handle is the actual model that holds the slashing sound, and this is different inside Roblox, or inside, wow, I'm confused inside lumber than it is inside um, studio. So let's try and get this to match up with this, shall we? Oh, oh, by the way, the context menus, such as like E picks up alpha acts of testing, stuff like that. I'm not gonna be teaching that in these series. This is just the models themselves. So let's start by um, changing the mesh itself. Uh, it's got a 1.0. I'm going to put that down to a 0.5, so it's a little smaller. And then, uh, actually, should we... These are all 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. What if we do 1, 1, 1? There we go. That looks a little bit better, right? 
Uh, we're going to have to move this up because the model's different. And you do want your model size. Uh, hold on. Ugh. Handle. You want your model and your mesh to kind of be the same size because of the hitbox. Um, let's go scale. So this blue box that's around it, we want it just around the outside of the axe itself. This is why you see some things kind of clipping a little bit. This is also why you can stack things the way you can. There we go. That looks a little bit better. I'm gonna pull that out just a, just a hair. Now these are not exact measurements because I don't know what these look like inside the studio, but this is really close. So um, the next thing is the mesh itself has a texture. All right, that texture ID can be found on uh, Roblox itself. I found this one by Rodown Gamer YT. Hello, we know who that is. Shout out to you, buddy. I'm going to copy this, or no, I'm going to save this image as, and we're just gonna save it into downloads. And then I'm going to uh, show in folder, right click, and open GIMP. Where's GIMP? Open with GIMP. There we go. Close that. <clears throat> okay, so inside GIMP, we want to make these we want to make these colors match up to these colors. So we're gonna to have to get this like a, a pink hue uh, with the center being all cool and stuff. So let's see, can I just do some magic here? All right, so there's a threshold magic tool that I can use. I'm just gonna keep pushing it upward. All right, that, that went out a little bit. So let's come down to 57, about 57. So about there, and then I can do stuff like uh, colors, hue. Can we change this? Chroma. All right, that's, that's, this is not what I wanted to cancel. Where's the colorize? Colorize, color balance, there we go. Oh, oh, we can make it like all red. Magenta. <clears throat> to get an exact color, we could probably That's close. Of course, it's dark now, so I can't really tell what color that is Is that close? That's really close <laughs> uh, And then I can actually um cause this to be another layer. So let's go ahead and make that. Uh, I'm gonna do Control Shift L, so it takes and cuts that. I'm gonna right click and do New Layer. Uh, it's gonna have a little bit of an outline, but that's fine. <coughs> Next is um, the blue ribbon right there. That's the, down there on the handle, that's this part right here. And I can actually zoom in grab this right here and hopefully I can change this the same thing that we did a second ago colorize excuse me Ugh. color balance uh, oh we're on the we're on the wrong layer there we go uh-oh uh-oh cancel 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 all right I want to select this layer we're going to do color, color balance. Come on. Oh, oh, there we go. Try and match it up to the same colors. Magenta. Nope, 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 nope. How's it look on there? Does that look about the same? It does. Can I hit okay? Now I'm not too sure what these two thingies up here are but it doesn't look like they map out to anything. Unless it's, I can't tell. I can't tell what that is. Oh, okay, it's the shine. 
around the back, or around the, the edge. See the edge right here? That's what that is. So we need to change that color as well. I don't know where the gray is. Is that in the middle? No, this is in the middle. We're gonna have to change that color as well. So let's go right here. Uh, oh, Control Shift L, and then make that a new layer. And this is so we can change it later without having to go through all this chopping up of the pieces. So like, if I wanted to just manipulate this layer, I could like delete it completely and just that layer is being manipulated. Um, right here, let's go a little bit closer here. Oh, it's hard to see. Grab this and we're going to, uh, okay, there's a little bit of a line just past it. There we go. Tools and no color balance. Cyan, cyan, magenta, not working so well. I guess the, it's not working at all. I guess we could do highlights. No, no, shadows, push the shadows. Oh, there we go. Got to go up some, but it looks a lot darker than the rest. I guess it does have like a dark hue around the outside, but it's still, let's go to the mid-tones. This needs to go like way up. Where's the brightness? Uh, preset, last used. Last used? No, that doesn't work. Reset range, cancel, <clears throat> and let's do color temperature. Original temperature. Uh, that's just okay. Whoa. That's kind of cool. Cancel. It's not what we're wanting though. Colorize was the correct one. Let's go colorize. I want that. But let's push the highlights as well. And the shadows down. No, the shadows up. I guess we need brightness, don't we? Let's go to brightness and contrast. There we go. Put the contrast up as well. There. That's starting to look a little bit better. Huh? Push this just a little bit more, just like that. <coughs> Hit OK. Control Shift L. Make that into a new layer. Right click, new layer. So, and that's that's like a hot pink. <laughs> it's a bit much, just saying. But now, um, if we make these all disappear, the color of our wood grain right here and the wood grain right here, um, I can just modify the single layer. Um, because we don't know what this is, I'm going to go ahead, oh, let's cancel. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and place it into its own layer as well. Control Shift L. Uh, oh, region is empty. There we go. Control Shift L. Right click. To new layer. So now we have all of our different layers. So now uh, this brown color, I can go and just turn it into the white color. So let's go to color balance. Can we push these? Oh, no, this is not working. Highlights all the way up as well. No, shadows all the way down. Oh, that does not work. Well, it worked a little bit. Well, let's, hit, let's hit okay on that and then let's change the brightness. <clears throat> let's go to um, colors, brightness and contrast. Brightness all the way up. Contrast all the way up. Whoa. <clears throat> that turns it like a bright color, but is that the color that we're looking for? 
I would say it's close. It's really close. So let's let's just hit OK on that, and I'm going to extract this back out. Control Shift E, and we'll go. We're going to extract this as um, Alpha X test done export and file save as alpha axe test in documents minimize okay oh, oh we're back in here <clears throat> so let's switch back over to studio no studio oh studio that's no that's obs for studio wait where's my studio program oh there it is okay so Let's go to uh, images, and I'm just going to import. Go to where did we extract it to? Was it downloads or documents? Uh, downloads. So, right here, alpha test. Okay. Check mark is good. Now let's go over here, and we're going to hit that mesh. There's the mesh ID, and where is the texture ID? Right there. Let's go down to the bottom. Alpha test. Ooh, that is that is really close. It looks like the model might be different. Hold on. That's really close, though. All right. Let's go back over to the mesh. Uh, I believe the mesh may be slightly thinner than we first calculated. Uh, X is how wide, Y is how tall, Z would be like this. So 0.98, no, 0.7. Whoa, no, that's not 0.85. It looks a little bit better. Oh no, that's the gray. <laughs> oh, so there was a portion of it. Okay, so let's head back over to our GIMP and this gray one right here, select our float. We need to change this. Uh, filters, no, colors, go to color balance. Oh gosh. Can we do, where's the magenta? Turn this down just a little bit. What about yellow? What's yellow do? There we go, there we go. There it is. Okay, now we got it. Control Shift Extract, Alpha Axe Test. Do you want to replace? Yes, let's replace. Export, File, Save, and Minimize. Okay, so now, import. We're just gonna import this one back over the top. Asset already has, oh no. So um, we need to go and delete our asset. Um, let's hit X on that. Oh, oh, it's already got one there. Okay, does it work though? There we go. And now it's, oh no, it's slightly off color. But you get the idea. <clears throat> so now that should um, always check scripts, okay? So if you have a script inside the game, make sure, uh, or if you put in some kind of free model, look at the script, make sure you know what the script is doing and look for hidden scripts because there are a ton of free models out there that have hidden stuff that you do not want happening inside your game. Now, I've taken the liberty of looking through this particular one and it looks okay. I mean, I think there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but again, I could have missed something. Who knows? Looking at the sword script. <clears throat> Let's go all the way over here. R equals game equals run service. Uh, gets the service of run service. Local damage equals to one. Slash damage equals five. Sword equals script dot parent dot handle. Tool equals script dot parent. There's the slashing sound. Uh, this function is called a, uh, it's like blow hit. So whatever object you hit. 
um, if not hit or hit dot parent then return so this says <coughs> if hit if the part thing that it ran into doesn't actually exist don't do anything just get out of the function local humanoid equals hit dot parent find first child humanoid so if did we hit a character did we hit another person uh, character uh, v character equals tool dot parent so the tool is looking for us uh, v player is game dot players player from character v character so it's looking for the the user's player from the character that's inside the world if that makes sense so whenever you first res into the world or when you come into the world there's two areas that you appear at it's game dot players which is your actual player and then there's um, game dot workspace dot your player name and that's a module this right here the v player that's in game dot players the character is inside the workspace where you're at human is the v characters find first child humanoid uh, if it's not nil if the, the blah, blah 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 if humanoid is not nil and humanoid health is greater than zero then and humanoid is not equal to hume so you can't hit yourself and hume is not equal to nil meaning you hit a human that's not real or not there if that makes sense um final check to make sure that the sword is in hand local right arm equals v find first child right arm if right arm is not equal to nil so if the person has a right arm i bet we could <laughs> Then local joint equals right arm find first child right grip. Uh, if joint is not equal to nil, then joint dot part zero equals sword. Where's sword is this? okay, cool. Or joint dot part one. Okay, so this is this is really confusing. Humanoid take damage. So it's calling a function. Tag humanoid with humanoid v player. Where's the function for tag humanoid? Is that is that an actual function? Hold on. Sure enough, it is. Look at that. Tag humanoid. Hold on. Did we create that function? We did. So this function down here, humanoid player local creator tag equals instance dot object or instance dot new object value creator tag dot value equals player creator tag dot name equals creator creator tag dot parent equals humanoid game dot debris add item creator tag so it's got one second to live attack okay that's another function sword up sword out Oh, okay. So, like, the sword, whenever you have it in your hand, you can do a chop motion, and then there's, like, this lunge motion that you can do. That's what these are. It's just changing the vectors. Which, that's kind of cool. Sword across parry. I don't think that's actually used anywhere, is it? Probably not. Tool that enabled equals true. Last attack equals... Whoops. Control Z. Last attack equals zero function on activated so when you click and you've got it in your hand uh, if tool dot uh, if not tool dot enabled then return so if the tool d is disabled then don't do anything um, and then it sets tool dot enabled to tr uh, false so if it's not true it returns but if it is true then we set it to false and then do all this stuff and then at the end enable it again so you can't you can't just constantly attack. Um, all right, humanoid equals character dot humanoid. Humanoid equals nil. Print. Okay, I'm just kind of reading through the code now, so it's not actually doing anything bad. Looks like you might be able to de deal some damage to people. Wood dot name equals wood. Okay. And Paris child base part then local. Wood equals instance dot new part. Wood dot name equals wood. It's true, false, new form factor. 
class. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this actually turns the person into, like, if you hit somebody with this axe, it will turn that person into wood. It sets their health to zero, and then all their parts become can collide, and then they fall apart. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it in the game. That's funny. Okay, so uh, let's hit F5. <clears throat> let's just run this real quick. And let's compare, oops, let's compare notes. <clears throat> All right. There's me holding it inside lumber. And it looks like this might be a little bit a little bit big. That's that's a lot of bit big. <laughs> that is way too let's stop. <laughs> Alright, our model is a slightly off. Um <laughs> uh, let's go 0 0.75, 0 0.75, and 0.857565. Let's try that. F5. Run it. This will make it a little bit smaller. We've got coins falling down. Okay. So there's our alpha axe in the game. It looks like the handle is off. So we want the handle to be at the very end right here. And I have a great plugin for that called the gun script or something like that. Uh, there's a plugin. Um, click this. Oh gosh, where is it? Oh, I don't have it in this version. Do I? Animation editor, rig builder. Uh, where's my tools? Hmm. Well, here, let's go, let's go grab it real fast. Find plugins. And it's called Handle. Handle. Maybe it's gun. Gun something. Gun handle holder rig thing. Oh gosh. Uh, gun handle. Tool. I guess it'd be a tool tool. I'll have to figure it out. Tool handle. Hmm. Well, poop. <laughs> um, let's see if I can do this manually. <laughs> let's get out of that. Oh, it is large, isn't it? Let's go back over to model and scale. Yep, yeah, that's that's what I want. Scale. Let's pull this down to about about there. Pull this down to about there, and make this a little less wide, just like that. So. Handle. Mm, there's position. Where is the. There's an offset. Uh, grip pose. Point 0.8. Negative point 0.8. Let's do. Let's do negative one. So negative point eight goes to negative one. That fell down. Oh, closer. We got a lot closer. Stop. <clears throat> um, handle negative one point two. And let's make this negative point five. Do, 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 do. I'm having to run after this thing, aren't I? Whoops. Alright, so negative 0.5 pushed it that direction. Which is not the way we wanted to go. We want to go left and right, not front to back. <coughs> so, go back over here. Put this back down to zero. We'll put this to negative 0.5. 
<laughs> oh, put it on the back side of the hand. Ugh. Don't you love testing? So it's going to be 0. 0.5 instead of negative 0. 0.5. So take out the negative right there. Uh, can you see it behind my head? Yeah, you can see it. It's good. It's good. <clears throat> All right. Boop. Way too far out. And is it just me or does it look? Hmm. Okay. Okay. We can fix this. We can fix this. Let's go back over to the handle. Point one two five. Ooh, that is close. That is super close. Now it does look like it's a little bit taller. Maybe. Can you can you tell the difference in between the two? Yeah, we can we can still tell the difference, but there is how to create, um, uh-oh, uh-oh, no, the script itself is broken. I messed something up in the script, so we'll have to come back to the script itself. But there's how to recreate a model of an axe inside your game if you wanted to use one. Like I said, be sure you check the scripts. Make sure you don't download or, or pull into your game something weird. Um, and it's not a permanent, so it doesn't, like, damage your game. If you hit stop, it, it pulls it back and you can you can correct it. So, thank you everyone for watching this episode of not Lumber Tycoon 2, um, of modeling, I guess. Um, Roblox Studio, how to make a game? I don't, I don't know what to call the series. Suggestions down below. Love you guys very much. Have a great night. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Do all those cool things I'm supposed to call out at the end. Um, yeah, we'll talk to you very soon. Outro. <laughs>